Hello, Full Book Questers, and it is I, Aaron the Book Quester, and today we have this great book, The Vanderbeekers and the Hidden Garden, a New York Times bestseller by Karina Yan Glaser. Like always, it has been nine months since I since I have took the video. For the first book of the Vanderbeekers series, the Vanderbeekers and the Vanderbeekers on 141st Street. That book was a heartwarming, tear-joking Christmas miracle happening over the Christmas week. And this book happens over the summer break. And the next book, book three, will happen in the spring break, apparently. But for now, let's stick with this awesome book, Vanderbeekers and the Hidden Garden. Let's see what they're up to. Issa, one of the gentlest and the prettiest among her siblings, and she's excellent at the violin. She goes to orchestra camp, and she won't be able to come back for a while. And in in the start, the one of the first first paragraphs of the book, Mister G. Their beloved neighbor, with along with Mrs. Josie, has a stroke, and she has to go to the hospital for several days. He's bedridden and he is very sick, and the Vanderbeeker children are afraid that he might die. And Mrs. J Miss J Miss Josie has been saying to turn the abandoned lot. Next to Triple J's church, and to a beautiful community garden. Of course, the children always dismissed the idea, saying the saying the place was haunted, and they would never step foot inside it. But Oliver's mind changes when she sees Mister Jeet sick and Missus Josie always so cheerful, so worried. And he decides that that goddamn piece of land shall be the most beautiful community garden in Harlem in the time that Issa will come back from her camp, which means that they have less than a couple days to finish the garden. First of all, there's the trash piles of trash enough to fill fill a dumpster, and and next there have they have to find some plants. Where are they gonna find those? I mean, it's not like they have like billions of dollars of pocket money on them. And the Vanderbeekers are need are needy for another miracle. This time, not a Christmas miracle, but in the summer. And a greedy man named Mr. Huxley, also known as Herman Huxley's father, they found they find out the son Herman Huxley falls really far far from the apple tree. After all, he's a really nice dude, actually. And they they need to do something about it. And Mr. Mr. Huxley is gonna sell the land, destroy it, and have a fancy building on it, and make great money off it. Yay, money, money! And well, the Vanderbeekers need to stop this evil because after the many weeks of cleaning, after the many hours and days of cleaning the trash, buying plants, scraping off on on their allowance. Buying trees, plants, roses, lavenders, flowers, and some and some sailing plants, and the entire garden was filled with plants. How will they stop Mr. Huxley? The answer lay in Mr. Biederman, and this is one of the most delightful parts of the story. One of the like in the Lord of the Rings. One of the most delightful part is when. The ministrist is being sieged, and when it fell behind them, the great cavalry rose and met the army of the orcs. Like that part, this part is truly heartwarming and possibly one of the best humorous part of the book. And it's like, 
No one needs to see anything, Mr. Huxley Snap. The land is sold. Nothing can be done. Unless the church wants to be sued for a breach in con... Wait a second. A breach in contract. And... And have you seen what's there, Jesse said. What you're destroying. And then, could the church be really be sued? Before another word was spoken, a swift wind swept down 141st Street, rustling the ivy on the garden fronts so fiercely that it sounded like a stadium cheer, swelling him to a roar. Woohoo! I find it peculiar, came a voice from behind them, that you sold this land without properly researching. Its historical significance. Everyone froze, then slowly turned around. There, standing tall, was the sun behind him, dun -dun 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 -dun. and the leaves rustling all around him stood Mr. Biederman. Mr. Huxley's voice lowered, I don't know who you are. I am Arthur Biederman. Biederman, he said, his voice clear and strong. I was a member of this church for nearly two decades, until six years ago. My wife and I said our vows at the altar in front of friends and family. When our daughter Louisiana came along, she learned how to climb stairs by practicing on those steps. She made her first friends at the church preschool. Church preschool and played on that land you want to build on top of. Mr. Huxley sniffed. You certainly don't expect that the church to renege on a seal just because your daughter. She also played on the same land where Adam Clayton Powell Jr. once stood, Mr. Baderman continued, the same Adam Clayton Powell Jr. who preached the good news as a pastor and campaigned here for the House of Representatives. In 1944, a street is named after him, Laney said excitedly. And finally, according to many lifelong Harlem residents and a dozen highly esteemed researchers, this is the same land where a safe house for the Underground Railroad stood, sheltering people escaping from slavery as they fled north. How, 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 how can you prove that? Mr. Huxley stammered. I have proof right here. She said, Roy pulling books and file folders, bulging with papers out of a racket briefcase. I had help. I had help from the local library, and the librarians assured me they have much more material if needed. My miss, my friend, Miss Lynn of the Landmarks Preservation Commission, is so eager to maintain important pieces of Harlem that she kindly expedited the paperwork. Plus, the judge was notified of the situation and placed a cease and desist order on the land sale. I am sure you'll be notified soon. She's thrilled that a garden has been planted on the land, and she plans to put up a plate. plate. Commemorating the space once the paperwork is official. Mr. Biederman paused to take a breath, then to look at the Vanderbeekers' kids, who whose raw jaws had dropped in amazement. And of course, I had help from my friends, who showed me how to live again, for which I am endlessly grateful. I mean, come on, this Biederman guy, he's one of the coolest dudes in town, man. He used to be a lonely old werewolf living in his house, never getting out after his daughter's death for six years. But he got over it, and he's one of the greatest, most humorous, and the most snap-biting, best, one of the best characters in the book. And Mr. Biederman, he saved the day, and the Vanderbeekers and the Hidden Garden were saved. And the community garden would stay there for a long time, possibly because there's so much legal boundaries around it, and possibly because the Hidden Garden is so beautiful on its own. Even Louisiana, one of Louisiana's little boxes, 
full of the seeds that Mr. Biederman has once sown had, had, had grown out of the middle of the garden, and it was beautiful, commemorating Miss Josie, Mr. Jeet, and Mr. Biederman's memory, for they had attached a slightly complex speaker and sensor, and that if you step on lavenders, the favorite flowers of Mr. Baderman's daughter, Louisiana. The song, the favorite classic song that Louisiana played on her violin would softly play, and everyone would be at peace there. And the Banner Beakers had done it again. Another miracle truth for you to read. And it's one of the greatest books. Not a fantasy. Not a fantasy, of course. But this is one magic that you cannot get sick of. And like always, your bookquester and the bookquester. Read this book, guys, and absolutely.